All right, so we're going to demonstrate uh, the use of the Corex device on uh, the for harvesting purposes of the posterior superior iliac spine region. And obviously, uh, this structure can be palpated subcutaneously. The structure is a subcutaneous accessible structure. There is no fascia immediately superficial to the posterior superior iliac spine. The gluteal muscles attach along an aponeurotic uh, attachment to the rim and your erector spiny muscles and uh, your uh, sacroiliac ligaments attach medial but immediately superficial to the posterior superior iliac spine is just subcutaneous fat and skin. In this model over here we show uh, that we have created with the use of the Corex Trefine a cortical defect. If this is a little bit larger than our Trefine that we're showing here which is our smaller version of the Trefine and uh, this can be enlarged once you reach the shoulder surface of the Trefine by just wobbling the trocar tip as you rotate it as, uh, while you're in the posterior superior iliac spine. So the approach, as you can see, uh, the mid-sagittal plane is here. If we want to stay parallel uh, to the plane that's generally uh, defined by the inner and outer table, tables of the iliac crest, we have to angulate from posterior medial to anterolateral. And we also can angulate a little bit caudal uh, staying out of the superior or greater um, sciatic notch, which is located right here. We're going to be doing the harvesting, of course, with the trocar tip off. But this would be a good entry angle, uh, perhaps uh, uh, 25 to 30 degrees angulated from uh, medial to lateral relative to a direct anterior to posterior angulation. So after we place our trocar tip through the uh, skin incision, and it can be done percutaneously, I would use a hemostat close to rake the soft tissue with the basically subcutaneous fat and feel the surface, if you will, by running it along in a medial to lateral and lateral to medial direction to get a good sense for where this surface most posterior of the posterior superior iliac spine is. Then once you've envisioned in your mind's eye the proper trajectory and location, you would locate the trocar tip on and again it's an oscillating motion with light pressure. Once it gets started it will stay fixed and it's back and forth, back and forth. More movement and rotation than pressure. And this will start shaving the cortical surface. And you continue to proceed in that manner until you reach down to the shoulder stop. And you'll feel an absence of resistance. And I'm just going to continue doing this. And then once I feel like there's no resistance that I've completely, I will enlarge the hole with this smaller trocar tip a little by wobbling a little and keeping my direct but light pressure on this, in the case, saw bones. Once we've done that, we've created a hole through the cortex that we can then place our tree fine through. I'm going to recap the trocar tip, use the release tool. I can take the release tool off unless I put the trocar tip back on. And now again, in the angle that we've talked about from medial to lateral, posterior to anterior, I'm going to again oscillate. I'm not going to strike this with a mallet. It's more a matter of using the cutting teeth on the end of the tree fine and staying in the same direction. If for some reason you can't feel the hole, again I'd use a hemostat in a closed position to try to find that defect that you created with the trocar tip and then remember the angle of entry and then put in your corex 
and by working back and forth you will feel and you will hear a gritty uh, sort of uh, sound and texture as you are micro fracturing the cancellous bone and each time you go into a particular depth if you start to feel a distinct stop and an absence of any additional progress with light to moderate pressure and advancement, the likelihood is you're up against the cortex or you've reached a point where the cortical walls have approximated sufficiently that it will not allow this particular diameter of core X to advance further. At that point, rotate the handle such that the upper handle in black relative to the lower handle goes from a green to a red position. And this is not done with just fingertip grasping, but with a forceful grasp and a turning till it goes to a fully locked position. Then rotate, withdraw, return the handle back to the open position and place your uh, tamp to deliver the cancellous bone from the tip of the corax. And that's repeated in different angles until you've evacuated sufficient bone for the procedure or exhausted the supply of bone that's available to you with the use of the corex. The corex can also be used like a uh, forward curette and that is by placing the uh, beveled surface against the edge of the inner table or out, I mean the outer and or the inner table and then kind of pushing it like you'll peel the cancellous bone and you'll feel the cancellous bone as you're gliding along the table and once you've collected enough inside again rotate from green to red fully withdraw and deliver the fragments of bone and that's essentially it thank you